And we have to get rid of liking. It might sound unpleasant, but we have to. So he said, well, I can't get my head around that. What do you mean? And I said, well, look, okay, take red peppers. Red peppers make me feel sick. I don't dislike red peppers. Lots of people enjoy red peppers. God made red peppers for all of humanity, and we're all different. And God's not stupid. If you think God would make something that's inherently bad, then there's something wrong with the way you're thinking. God is clever. And I know God is clever. It would be a slight on his intelligence to suggest otherwise. So I don't need to dislike red peppers. I avoid them. Simple. I don't like red peppers. I don't like bananas. I enjoy them or avoid them. It's simple. And if we get rid of disliking and disliking, then you can't dislike a person because you know God created them. God loves everybody, all six billion of us. You know, why do you think, you know, some people think God's stupid. Why do you think God went to all that trouble to make us all different? Earth signs, fire signs, water signs, air signs. It could have been like Henry Ford, made them all the same. Spare parts would be cheaper. <laughs> Who would make six billion people all different? You see, with four types of people, four astrological signs, we all argue all the time. This is great. Because think about what it would be like if we all agreed. You know, isn't that a nice picture? Yeah, that's a wonderful picture. Well, I wouldn't do another one, would I? What if somebody said, oh, I've had a bad day, I'm going to commit suicide? Well, I agree, I'm going to commit suicide. (laughs) And everybody commits suicide. So God would stop growing, wouldn't he? So God's got to make sure that we all disagreed. And so this is an important part of the mechanism of life on earth. Which is why we'll never go to another planet. I mean, this is your domain now. If we go to another planet which doesn't have a sun like ours, we're all going to be the same. If we use artificial insemination and fertility pills, we're all going to think the same. And sooner or later, we'll all kill ourselves on that planet, whether it be Mars or wherever. So we have to find a sun which has two magnetic fields where they rotate at different speeds, where they produce the right hormones to give us four types of star sign to all make us disagree so we can all be happy. (laughs) Easy, isn't it? So how are you... Now, I know... I figured all this out because I was rich in this life because I had an education. I could think this stuff through. That's when I say rich, because I I was able to do this. I don't mean money. But I know next time, if I'm not very careful, I'll come back as a poor person. Now, Jesus says, give all your wealth away and follow me. It's difficult, isn't it? You've got the bank manager and say, I'd like to take all my money out because I'm giving it away. Difficult, isn't it? So I think, well, okay, what's the next best thing? If I write all this information down, the next time I come back, if I read it, (laughs) I'll come back rich and go to heaven because I'll know what to do and how to live, and I'll know that this is hell. Now, I could write it down in pictures, like this Aztec calendar, and explain how the world ended on four previous magnetic reversals in the last 18,169 years. This is the Aztec calendar. Or I could encode it in numbers. Don't forget, a a picture's worth a thousand words. But some stuff like 26, 37, 1366040, 18,100. Very difficult to put that in a picture because the language will change. You know, when the Spaniards invaded Mexico, they stopped speaking the Quichemaya tongue. They started to speak Spanish. So the numbers might change. The language changes So I've got to make it more permanent. So I need to encode numbers of the sun's rotation, a very important, 26, 28 if you're on the earth, 37 or 41 if you're on the earth, 96, that's the number of magnetic sunspot cycles, 97 if you're going to count the one that includes the 18,000 year cycle, the number of magnetic shifts, 20, if we're talking about magnetic reversal, the 1366040 if we're talking about rises and falls of civilization, 
and 1366560 if we're talking about Venus. So we're going to go down to Mexico now, and we're going to have a look at the Temple of Inscriptions at Palenque, because it was there in 1952 that the archaeologist Alberto Ruz took the paving slab off the top of the pyramid here, he scratched out the mortar filling from those holes, and he found a staircase running down inside the pyramid here. 26 steps. He then turned to his right along a landing and went down 22 steps. There was four more inside the tomb at the bottom, which he later discovered. So 26 altogether. Again, there was a brick wall at the end with a stone box. And in the stone box, there was a pearl in a seashell. The pearl represents the planet Venus and rebirth in ancient civilizations. And some of the numbers the ancient civilizations used, like 666, the mark of the beast in the Bible, uh, they used those to convey the information which we're talking about. And they also used 999. Well, if 666 is hell, what do you think 999 might be? Heaven. Yeah, it's a good idea, isn't it? Okay. Well, why would the pearl be in the cinnabar? Well, the pearl is Venus, and the atomic number of cinnabar, the, the powdered form of liquid the liquid metal mercury is 80. It means it's got 80 protons in the middle. So the pearl in the seashell is number 81. Now I know that because when I was studying Tutankhamun, he had 143 pieces of jewelry inside his bandages. He was number 144. Of the 144,000 that go to heaven, the purified ones in Revelation. So the pearl in the cinnabar is number 81 which is nine nines, nine, 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 nine. So immediately, has this tomb got something to do with heaven? The, the door to the tomb was triangular. They demolished the, the stone chest, which had 11 jade beads, three red painted shells, and three plates. And they entered the tomb in 1952, July. And Alberto Ruz noticed that there was five beams holding up the ceiling, six pillars on the wall, that the, the sarcophagus lid here had two corners missing. And of course, what's missing isn't missing if you're a Mayan. And what's not missing is, is missing. And uh, the sarcophagus inside had one of the corners chopped off. So that was the sarcophagus lid. It weighs five tons, 12 foot long, six feet wide, solid limestone, so big they can't remove it from the tomb. And the body was kept in this sarcophagus, which had a missing corner at the bottom here. And the carving on the sarcophagus in the, was very popular in the 1960s because Eric von Däniken said it might be a guy in a spaceship. But this was going to be much more than any of those things because the triangular door represented a journey into the mind. When we examine the, the uh, pyramid, Just going back to that picture we saw a few moments ago, the paving stone at the top, there were two holes in one corner, two holes in the other corner, two holes in the other corner, two holes in the other corner, and there were two plaster heads on the floor showing the man in the tomb, Lord Pekal. That was one of them. And that was the other one. There were three clay plates in the stone chest, three red painted shells, three sides to the door tomb, three jade beads, one, the man in the tomb, the bones of the man in the tomb, had a jade bead in his right hand, a jade bead in his left hand, and a jade bead in his mouth. And he had a necklace around his neck with three levels on it. There were four steps down to the tomb itself. The man had four jade rings on his left hand, four jade rings on his right hand. There were four pairs of holes in the slab at the top. And there were four concrete plugs, or limestone plugs, holding down the lid of the tomb. There were five pyramid landings, five temple stairways, five male skeletons, five ceiling beams, five sarcophagus sides. There were six temple pillars, six sides of the tomb, but there were no more sixes in the temple at, at uh, Palenque in Mexico. 